Good evening, everybody. I was just about to say that it's hot in Colorado today, and then I realized that Danielle lives in Florida, so I thought, Cindy, you better not say a thing. So anyway, <laughs> thank everybody for joining us tonight. We're going to talk about freedom and flexibility and how building an ASEA business allows for that kind of lifestyle. So, you know, who cares how much money you're making if you have no time to enjoy it? And who cares how much time you have if you don't have any money to do anything? So we've got that blend here with this biotech company that decided to release this discovery to the people through the people. And Danielle Matthews is going to talk with us about that subject tonight. So Danielle, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, Cindy. Yeah. Yeah. And she's just getting back. A lot of people are traveling, uh, enjoying the last month of summer, I think. And I think the kids are starting to get back into school and the rhythm of everything is just changing a little bit. So I'm happy to have uh, Danielle here and we'll uh, continue to bring you these Monday nights. It's good just to get your mindset in the right place as you go out in the world. And one of the best places to get your mindset in, in, uh, in place is to come to convention, which is coming up in a month. So Anyway, Danielle, I know um, some people know your story, some people don't, but um, I know you were in a horrible car accident, left you with a head injury, and um, then your parents were introduced to ASEA. They introduced you to ASEA, told you you were going to take it. You said, okay, if you want to just waste your money, they, you took it for three months, and all of a sudden your world started to change and your brain started to work. So then you've been on a mission ever since then telling other people about ASEA. No, ASEA is not for sick old people. It's for people with cells. And that includes you. And that includes me, even though I'm probably double your age. Not so, quite. Anyway, <laughs> But rather than the biotech conversation, although you are a biology major, mm -hmm. let's have a lifestyle conversation about yes. Lifestyle, because that's really what people are looking for. You know, not many people go to bed at night wondering how many redox signaling molecules they have, but lots of people go to bed at night wondering how they're going to pay their bills, wondering how they're going to, you know, how the long more, how much longer they can do this job, this commute, live on this kind of income, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, we've got a solution for people who are looking for one. And um, why don't we talk, why don't you talk a little bit about the freedom and flexibility that this business has afforded you as opposed to living in a cubicle? Yeah, well, you know, you got to think about outcome. What do you want? You know, after my car accident, and as I started to get my health back, and I was thinking about life again, and I was able to dream about what do I want to do? Because I, now I have my health, because I was told I never would get it back again. A couple of things are very clear to me. Number one, like tomorrow's not guaranteed. And Cindy, I, for one, cannot unknow that. Like the fact that this car accident happened and I was doing nothing wrong. It was seven o'clock in the morning, right? I was going to meet my parents to go to a wedding, like typical day. And uh, everything changed. And fortunately, I didn't lose my life, but it made me realize like we're all here by a thread. And I don't know what everyone is waiting for. It's like, we think, oh, we'll do it tomorrow. Oh, next week. Oh, next year. Oh, when this isn't stressing me out. Oh, when that's not going on. Like, no, if you want a different life, like you're a decision away. And I was forced into the decision, but I know that everybody is that. Like you literally just make one choice and it's done, you know, and you, you put yourself on a different trajectory. Everything didn't change that day, but in a ways, everything did change that day for me. You know, it took years for that all to kind of fall into place. But as I started to get better, as I was thinking like, okay, I have some bandwidth. I have the capacity to maybe work a few hours a day. What I wanted was uh, stability. So some security. I, having lost my health, I lost my ability to work. And again, when like I was young when I had this lesson, you know, and I, I think people in their twenties typically don't think about this, but for anybody on the call, I don't care what age you are. Like the truth is like, what would happen if your health was gone tomorrow? Like Cindy, I know you've been through this Bo has like, you guys know this situation. It can go like that. And is your income dependent upon your presence? Mine was everything I had learned, right? I went to a top university. I got a great degree, but everything they taught me to do was go get a good job from a good employer and work nine to five and work your tail off. So then you can move up the ladder and, you know, all that stuff. And 
as I got my health back and I was thinking, I was watching all my friends, you know, they're going to graduate school, they were getting PhDs, they were becoming doctors. And I just thought there is no way I'm going for that lifestyle because anything could happen to me again. And then it's all for naught. Like if I can't show up for work. So for me, it was about figuring out, well, how do you make money if you're not trading your time for money? And this was like a total... Just like mind, like my mind couldn't grasp how that was possible because no one had really taught me that. And uh, I'll never forget reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Like for anyone that's read Robert Kiyosaki's book, if you hadn't been, go get it. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I was the person flipping through the first part of that book going like, oh, of course, the rich dad is the one that went to school and got a good degree. And I was literally like, I wish someone had a video of me reading that book because when I flipped the page and he said that that was, you know the entrepreneurial dad, the dad that did a million things, the dad that didn't go on to school. I was like, what? Like, have I been fooled (laughs) my whole life? So for me, it it was like, okay, well, my mom saw it. My mom said, Danielle, network marketing is a way that you can continue to get paid for work that you've done up front. And if you do it right, you can create residual income that will come to you passively. It's not going to happen immediately, but down the road, you could set this up. Like the time is going to pass anyway. So set yourself up. And I thought, okay. So, you know, I was looking for that. I was also looking for flexibility because here's what I know. Again, tomorrow's not guaranteed. So how am I spending today? I refused to spend it doing anything that either didn't give me joy or wasn't making an impact on people positively. And I just said, I absolutely refuse to give my time to anything else because if I'm gone tomorrow from this planet, I want to know that I spent my last day doing those things. And to have flexibility with your time requires a a type of work that is flexible. You know, this business, you have to work. Like, I don't like when people paint the picture of like, oh, you make a ton of money and you don't do anything. Like, you need to work, (laughs) but you get to decide when you work and the work is fun. You know, the work is changing people's lives and, and things like that. So That's really what it was for me. That's what I was looking for. I was looking for the flexibility. I was looking for security for, you know, future in case something were to happen and to have an impact knowing that, hey, tomorrow might not be here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was talking to Maurice McMillan today, who's recently joined our team, who's been in network marketing for 30 years. And I, and we were talking to a woman in California, Laguna Beach, and um, she loves the model of network marketing because she gets the vision. I mean, she gets the vision that you can bring people with you and you don't make money unless you help other people make money, unless you help other people be successful, which most people don't understand. And I think that most people don't understand it because they've never um, been successful in it and they've never known anybody who's been successful in it. A lot of people have failed in network marketing and a lot of people know people who have failed in network marketing and therefore they put all the network marketing companies in the same bucket and they say it doesn't work, which is exactly what I did. And I was talking to Maurice today and I said, you know what? We love our cardiologist. He's a fantastic doctor, but I would never want his job. Now he gets paid a lot of money, I assume per hour, but if he doesn't have his stethoscope on somebody's chest, or if he's not in his little, you know, hospital gown, he's not making any money. And, you know, I read in the ebook, Michael Gerber's book, the ebook book that, if your business requires your pres- presence, you don't have a business, you have a job. And if you have a job, then you have to be there. And the trouble with people like us who like to travel and you know do things at the spur of the moment is that you can't because they tell you when you're working and when you can have vacation and how much vacation you can have. And oh, by the way, when you work, how much they're willing to pay you. So you're not getting paid what you're worth, you're getting paid what the job is worth. So I don't know, I just think, and I know that you're on the same page, that we're born with infinite potential. And for us to limit ourselves with this glass ceiling, because it has this description of a job, and that's all we get is like selling ourselves short. So, you know, you what we've learned as we go out there and we talk to people is some people are open and some people aren't, and we are not in the convincing game. So we're in the education game and you can't teach anybody anything if they don't want to learn. Right. Yes. <laughs> you were willing to learn. And I know that you uh, came to a big event in uh, where was it? Was it in Florida? Uh, the first event was in Vegas. It was like the ethos Academy. 
um, when I met you and I met Bo. And then I think a convention that year was in, was in Florida. So that was my second big event. Yeah, I remember you because you're a good student. You're an overachiever sitting in the audience and scratching your head going, wait, what? You know, I mean, so, you know, I did a job fair one time at a high school and was really passionate about making sure people in high school at least knew about reproductive residual income, you know, passive reproductive residual income. I mean, the reason that we could jump on our motorcycle last week and ride to the Sturgis motorcycle rally was because we decided to, and we can. We just had to have somebody watch our cat and our dog, water our plants, and we're out of here. So I love having the freedom and flexibility. I know you just got home from a trip, right? So you mm -hmm. just decided to go and you went. You don't have to ask anybody permission, right? Yeah, well, and also the, I think the, the interesting thing that I don't think we talk about enough because I didn't understand this until it happened in, in this type of business is the network you build, you know? And they always say your net worth is reflective of your network. And I didn't think about that when I started, but my network has expanded. Like I now know people all over the globe and they're really interesting people, people that are interested in health, people that are interested in having an impact, people that are not wanting to have a typical job that are wanting to kind of make life on their own terms that have dreams, like the type of people that are really exciting to be around. And, you know, I just went down to South Florida to visit a, a couple that's on my team. They're one, two, they're third level to me. They're double diamonds. And they look at life completely differently than anybody I've ever met. And it was like so refreshing to spend some time and like go into their world and to brainstorm and like all we talked about were ideas and like just things that we could create. And it was just exciting. And I, you know, driving home from that, I just thought, man, how blessed am I that the people that are getting drawn to me are these like bigger thinkers and who wouldn't want to be around that? You know, I can't imagine that. And so when, when I, when I talk to people, like to, get, to talk about convention, even like if you're already in a SIA and you're contemplating, like I always tell people on my team, convention you go to network like you go to go build your own network and go meet people that live from all walks of life from all over the world that have similar interests to you and who knows how you can benefit one another's lives maybe with an ASEA maybe with something else I don't know but if you don't show up you'll never know and you're never going to form a strong relationship like you have to do that in person even a virtual ticket like you'll get the information but you won't get the network right you won't get those connections and that's huge. I think that's huge in life. Like if I were to go do anything, I mean, not that I think the CEO is going anywhere, like don't take this wrong anyone. But what I'm saying is if something were to happen and all that disappears, my network doesn't disappear. You know, like these relationships you build, like the relationship I have with you and Bo, you know, I got stranded on the top of a mountain in Aspen with nowhere to sleep. And I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And you guys said, come on over. <laughs> I had two of my friends with me. It was like coming to family's house, you know, like, oh, my aunt and uncle are taking us in for the night. Like it was, it's just so beautiful. And the, that developed because of this business and they never would have seen it. But to me, it's probably one of the most beautiful things that's come out of all of it. Absolutely. You know, the, I, I remember um, uh, Marty Morin was saying, you know, he and his wife, Kathy, were getting a little older and their world was shrinking. And the, somebody introduced them to a SIA and all of a sudden their world started expanding again mm. because they came to convention. They met new people who introduced them to other people who introduced them to other people who asked them to be on phone calls that leveraged their expertise. You know, Marty's got an incredible background in, you know, uh, veterinary science. And so he sees the redox signaling molecules from an animal perspective, from a science perspective, but all of a sudden, instead of feeling like all that stuff that he learned in school was, you know, behind him because he was retired, he was leveraging that information, teaching that information and learning something himself. And all, all of a sudden belonging to a global network that he need, didn't even know existed. And so whether people were making money from Marty or not, it didn't matter because like you said, it was all about the relationship. Money, life is not always about money. Yes, you have to pay your bills and, you know, whatever, but, but the, the 
the payment that we get in relationships is priceless. You can't, yeah. you can't put a price tag on that. Right. And you're not just meeting people from the United States. You're meeting people from 33 countries around the world, soon to be 34 Indonesia at the end of the year. And so you're meeting people on the corporate side, as well as the field side. And, you know, it really is one dream, one team, one big ASEA family and when somebody finds out, oh, you're in ASEA, oh my gosh, you know, they have a kinship with you that mm -hmm. they wouldn't otherwise have. And a lot of people who haven't experienced that kind of network, that kind of community really don't understand network marketing because direct sales is different than network marketing. You're right. Network marketing is all about building a network. Yeah. 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 I hope like those of you listening, come like come to convention so that I can meet you <laughs> selfishly, you know, and you can meet one another and it'll just, it'll be beautiful. Um, you never know where it's going to go. And what I also love is, you know, I was so pulled out of my comfort zone. Like I, it doesn't seem like it, but I'm an introverted person, right? Like you look at where I live. I live in the middle of a forest and it's like 30 minutes to a town. Okay. Like, but I get to choose where I want to live. And because of this business, I'm able to do that, which has been just, let's talk about that for a minute before I go down the other. That has been huge for me. I was able a year and a half ago to make a decision to go move, to be with the person I wanted to be with. And I thought, oh my God, I'm moving to the middle of nowhere. Like he works for an ashram. The ashram is located not near anything on purpose. <laughs> it's like in the forest. Uh, and moving there, I, at first I thought, well, can I do this? Like, what about, what about work? What about earning an income? And, you know, thankfully, because of the pandemic, I had had to pivot my business and entirely go online. And so I went, holy cow, I literally have a business that I can work from wherever. Yes. Permission to move, like permission granted, you know? And so many people said to me, like, you're so lucky, Danielle, like you're so lucky that you're able to do that. And I said, luck has absolutely zero to do with it. There was, I made a decision eight years ago in 2015 in Las Vegas, where I said, I'm going to create a lifestyle for myself where I have options. And when time goes by down the road, and I don't know when it'll be, but I'm going to make it so I have options. And like, I'm living that option now. And I get kind of like defiant when someone tells me I'm lucky. And I say, it's nothing to do with luck. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a decision. And I executed it. And I dealt with all the BS around me for people telling me I was crazy. And now they don't think I'm crazy. Now I've got friends that like, I have a really good friend, best friend of mine from high school, not high school, college. She went on to get her PhD. She's just finished her PhD. She's getting married. And she and her fiance are going to have to live apart for the next year because of the way that their jobs are. And I'm like, that's miserable. Like, why do you want that life? And what's crazy is the year she started her PhD was the year that I started my ASEA business and we were living together. And I look at that decision point in both of our lives and like fast forward, what's been eight years and look where we are now. It's just, it's wild. And we're all one decision away, right? <laughs> like she could change her mind tomorrow. She, you know, she could get on a different path. But um, I think that's important to know. And I have no idea what the other point I was making was yeah. going to be. <laughs> well, you know, the, the point of the call is freedom and flexibility. And we live in a free country and there are people that fought really hard for our freedom. And it makes me crazy when people complain that they don't have freedom. Mm. And I'm like, well, then choose it. You know, right. the only one that's deciding that you're going to do whatever you are doing is you, you live in a free country. You're not a tree. If you want to move, change it. You know, yeah. you don't have to stay where you are. So, so many people get in that set mentality instead of this growth mentality. And, and you're right. It is not luck, luck doesn't have anything to do with it. There's a lot of becoming involved. There's a lot of tapping into your infinite potential facing your fears and doing things that, you know, are inconvenient sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, but that's when you're, when you're own, your own boss, that's, that's, you know, some of the responsibility that we have to take to make it work. But the other thing about this business is that I find it daunting. If somebody said, what if just somebody 
handed you this redox signaling technology, what would you do with it? Well, I would call Virtus Norton and say, can you help me? Because it's a huge project. So for $40, the fact that we can tap into the ASEA infrastructure that's already in place, their global warehouse you know, network, their research, their development, their accounting, their payroll, their everything that corporate does for us, and we are their marketing arm, Oh my goodness, that's a match made in heaven because I don't want to do all that other stuff. It's complicated. You know, it's very yeah. complicated. When you understand that, I think a lot of people don't have an appreciation for business, you know, it's because it's not taught in our school system very much. Even people with a business degree, sometimes I wonder like, well, what are they really learning? Um, if they're not learning to be entrepreneurs. And yeah, it, it's a total mindset shift. I'm telling you, rich dad, poor dad is what like, it's like totally flipped my thinking on everything. Um, but there was something that came up and I wish I could remember the name of the book and I can't. And so if it comes to me, I'll, I'll put it in, I'll put it on Facebook later. Um, I'll tag it here. But uh, a mentor of mine gave it to me when I first started because I was having a really hard time with, like I was, I saw the freedom, right? Of what this business was going to bring me. I saw the Danielle today back eight years ago. And I had family members, really good friends, um, all telling me like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, where are you going? You're wandering off like to la la land, like come back down to earth. You know, they just, they were trying to pull me back in. And this book, it talks about, and I don't remember it like exactly, but it's basically like this boy that he's living in a town and he's like, you know, in this really secure place and everything's provided. And, you know, then he gets this quite like, well, but there's no freedom really, because I have to do all these things in order to get all of this. And I want to leave the town. And as he tries to leave the town, you know, his family and his friends are like, where are you going? Mostly because they don't want to lose him. And then he leaves and he's like in the desert and he's like, oh my God, question like, what did I do? Like, where am I going? And I don't see anything out here. And like, what was I even thinking? And am I crazy? And then there's like this little stone or like this little sign he gets, you know? And it like gives him the like, the like, fire to keep going and he keeps going. And then he finds other people that were like him that left and they're encouraging him and they're cheering him on and they're like telling him what to do. And that book, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of it, but that book was so helpful for me to go like, oh, this is a normal journey. Like if you want freedom, if you want flexibility, if you want the things that the masses don't have, like you're going to have to do things the masses aren't doing. And so many people don't want to be judged by other people. They don't want to go against the grain. They don't want, you know, the opinions of others put on them because then they have to defend them or they feel like they have to defend them. The truth is you don't like, it's your life, go live it. But it, it's difficult. And to know like, that's the journey and that's okay. And it's the walk in the desert that makes you strong. And it's what makes you come back to, well, why am I doing this? And do I want to turn around and go back to the security? Right. But would you rather be a tiger in a cage that gets fed every day or would you rather be the tiger roaming the plains in Africa, or, you know, or the lion? Like, th think about that. What would you prefer? Like, I'd rather be out roaming. I'd rather be up to me as to what I catch and what I don't and how I live life because you get to experience the world. Otherwise, you're in a cage with, you know, medical help and food and water. But like, is that life? <laughs> That's right. not life. <laughs> you know, I read a book one time called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. And it's about a lawyer who has all of the accoutrement of life because he's got the fancy clothes and he's got the fancy car and he's got the fancy house and he's about 40 pounds overweight, not very healthy. And he's got, but he gets a lot of recognition and he's got the, the letters behind his name and he's miserable. Yeah. Finally, one day he has this aha moment and he goes, I'm done. And he sells everything and he moves to, I don't even remember where he went, but the point is he went from what we're taught in school to feeding his soul that was screaming at him. Like, you know what your life, you're guaranteed one life. And are you happy? And the answer was no. And so he, the, the Ferrari wasn't making him happy and the fancy house and the you know, all the letters behind his name and the clothes and the fancy dinners and the, you know, superficial conversations wasn't feeding his soul. It was starving. And yeah. he finally decided to sell everything and go find himself. And um, it's a wonderful book, little tiny book, not very thick, but it's really good for a, you know, 
um, a mindset shift. You know, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is, you know, my kids are 31 and 32. They don't want to build and see a business right now. I be, I grew up with people that every, as I felt like everybody around me had trust funds, except me. And yes. I, I'm, well, you're an Aspen. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I'm going to build my kids trust funds. So that's what I'm on. You know, that's what I'm doing right now. They've got a runaway leg. And if, and when they ever decide to build this, they'll have to build their inside leg, you know, and you know, God forbid, if something happens to Bo or I, they will inherit the business and they'll have a residual income, you know, that will carry on on the ripple effect after we're gone. So those kind of that kind of legacy thinking and that kind of long term, you know, thinking a lot of people are so busy on the on the um, squirrel, the hamster wheel of life that they don't even take the time and say, what do I really want? What is important to me? Where do I want to be in eight years? If I am where I am right now in eight years, doing what I have been doing, earning what I have been earning, is that okay with me? And if it isn't, for crying out loud, change it, right? Exactly. And I actually, I, I would encourage everybody, like, just take a moment because this exercise is super important. It's the first thing I have every single team member do. And I have them stop and visualize the movie Aladdin because I grew up with that movie and I love it. And you're in the desert and you see the little glimmer and you walk over and you find the, the lamp, right? We all know what happens. You rub the lamp, the genie pops out, but let's pretend for tonight, the genie is Cindy and I, Okay. And we are saying to all of you right now, you get one wish, one wish, what's your wish? And write it down. If you feel like putting it in the chat, put it in the chat, like confirm it, put it out to the universe, write it down. That makes a big difference going from here to paper, or here to this screen. And what I would encourage you to do, and we don't have time for it on the call, after you've written this down, I have a simple question for you. And the question is, why do you want that? All right. And then when you answer that question, my question again is why? And then you're going to do that. I, if I were with you, I would ask you that at least six, maybe seven times, because if you actually start coming down to like, why do I want the, fr the time freedom? You know, what am I going to do with that time freedom? You know, oh, well, I'm going to go travel the world. Why do you want to travel the world? You know, well, I want to experience other cultures. Why do you want to experience other cultures? Like you need to really get clear on what it is that is going to be the emotion. Like, what is your soul asking for? Because it's whispering to you all the time. It's saying, this can't be it. There's got to be more. Like there's more to life. I came here for more. What did it come here for? And for all of us, it's different. You know, what my soul came here to do and what Cindy's soul came here to do is different. And it happens to be that a C is the vehicle for both of us to, to achieve that. And ASEA might be the vehicle for you if you're on this call, it probably is. But this is a conversation to start having with people, like have conversations that other people aren't having. Be the person that changes somebody's life. Like think of yourself as an inflection point in someone's life. Like Tyler Norton at that ascent, or excuse me, at the um, Ethos Academy, that trip, he was an inflection point. Like the words that came out of his mouth made me think differently about my own life. And so we need to pay that forward, right? Every Tyler can't get in front of everybody. Like we take his message forward. And so you have to be the one to be bold enough to ask these questions, to sit people down and really say, well, what do you want? You know, you seem to have everything. Is it good? Or are you like the, you know, Ferrari person that wasn't happy with everything in life, you know? And like, well, what's your soul asking for? It's asking for purpose. It's asking for impact. You have no idea, but I can tell you the majority of people are not emotionally okay in there. It might look okay on the outside, but they're probably not. And we have community. We have the space for people to learn about themselves, to become more like, Cindy, you knew me since, you know, pretty much day one. <laughs> this is a different human being than, than I was back in 2015. And that's thanks to 100% to, to this business. And uh, I wish that for everyone, you know, to become the version of themselves they came here to be. And guys, we have that here. And, you know, you, you have to learn to convey that. I think we have all gotten very good at conveying the product, what this is, how it works, why it's beneficial. And we have a gazillion and one videos, if you're not good at that, 
what I think that we all need to work on is how do we convey the business opportunity? How do we convey this option, this beautiful thing that is sitting here that is the ASEA business? That is why all of us are here tonight on a Monday evening, or if you're over in you know Australia on a Tuesday morning, um, that's why we're all here and we don't talk about it enough. So hopefully we've given you some ideas on things to say or like to conversations to get going uh, because I think it's really important. Absolutely. You know, Mel Sword, I was talking to him earlier today and he says the same thing. He says, you know what, Cindy, nobody wants to make the phone calls. Nobody wants to talk to the people. Everybody wants the trips and the freedom and the cars and the, you know, the money and the, you know, glamour and the recognition and all that kind of stuff that comes with success. But most people go, oh, I just, I don't want to make the phone calls. I don't want to talk to strangers. I don't want to I don't want to get on Zooms. I don't, you know, fine. Then don't, but don't complain about not having what those people who are willing to do what other people are not willing to do so they can have the life that other people only dream about. That's why they have the life that most people only dream about because we have unlimited potential with this business. And the only thing between us and where we can go is ourselves. It's usually the six inches between our ears that's telling us a story that's untrue, that's leading us down a path that's not getting us to where we want to go. And if you don't know what you want, any path will get you there. So if you don't haven't taken the time to define what it is you want, then it's like shooting an arrow in the sky as opposed to at a dartboard at the bullseye in the center where there is a shortest distance between you know, you're the tip of the arrow to the board. So anyway, great call tonight. I think it's a very, very important subject. I think that it's, um, you know, worth every minute that we take to comp contemplate it. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, self-care, taking, taking care of yourself. But, but once you know what you want, then your job is to be a servant leader. And forget about yourself and go out there and help other people get whatever it is that they want. It's, you know, that that's the twist that most people don't understand. So um, anyway, Danielle, thanks so much for spending some time with us tonight. You can go unpack, take a hot shower and, you know, put your feet up. Um, I really appreciate you carving out some time tonight. Yeah, happy to be here. And little, uh, just to see a testimonial, I got, I got fried on the beach. <laughs> and I have been, yeah, I'm like, I live in Florida. What the heck was I doing? Uh, <laughs> got distracted with the conversation about the future with these two. And I was like, oh my God, I've been in the sun too long. Uh, <laughs> this stuff, holy cow. I'm like, what a blessing. And I've also just been spraying myself uh, and it feels so good. <laughs> so, you're out in the sun too much this summer. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All righty. Well, thanks so much, Danielle. Have an incredible night. We'll yeah, see you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Good night, everybody.